Lesson 13, Perceptron Training. To follow along with this lesson, you will need to create a new empty console project and add a new C++ file named main.cpp to it. In this lesson, we present a simple C++ implementation of the Perceptron Training algorithm. We covered the Perceptron algorithm in our first Neural Networks lesson, so you may want to review that video before continuing. For simplicity, this lesson uses a one-dimensional data set on a number line. In this case, linearly separable means that all the points in one class are greater than all the points in the other class. In this example, we've simplified this even further so that we train on only two points. Here's the full Perceptron training program which is available for downloading at zoax.net. The first eight lines are just our header information, so we don't need to go over that. In line 11, we declare and initialize an array of weights. Arrays were covered in lesson 10. Notice that the weights are not declared inside of any code block, therefore the weights have global scope. In lesson 11, we talked about global and local scope. In line 13, we begin the definition of our classification function. Recall that we covered functions in lesson 12. In the Neural Networks Lesson 1, we said that our classification function could be broken into stages, input, multiplication by weights, summation, thresholding, and output. That takes care of the classification function. Now we'll look at the main function which trains our perceptron and simultaneously uses the classification function. In lines 29 and 30, we declare and initialize the input and output arrays for the two points shown here. The inputs are the x values, and the outputs are the classifications. Here the point is colored green to indicate the output value is 1, and red for negative 1. Looking at the outer while loop in our main function, the code is very similar to the pseudocode that we showed in the Neural Networks Lesson 1. The outer loop runs until both points are correctly classified. In lines 36 through 41, we have added some code to output the results so that we can trace the execution of the program. In the inner loop, we run through both points, calculate the classification with our classify function. If the classification is not correct, we update the weights. Executing the program, we see that the outer loop runs through five iterations before the perceptron is trained. This means that the weights are updated four times. We can get a better idea of what is happening if we look at the results graphically. We begin with our two points on the number line. To illustrate the concept properly, we will embed the number line in a two-dimensional plane with our input x as one axis and the bias as the other axis. Note that our number line is a horizontal line since our bias is always one. For computational purposes, our points are vectors from the origin. Since the red vector has class negative 1, it will be subtracted. We illustrate that here by using the negation of the vector. Now we can run through the training iterations. Our weights start out at 0. During the first iteration, the first point is correctly classified, but the second point is not. So our weights are corrected by the red vector. During the second iteration, our first point is misclassified, but the second point is not. So our weight vector in white is the sum of the red vector from the first iteration and the green vector from the second iteration. In the third iteration, both points are misclassified. In the fourth iteration, the first point is misclassified. After this adjustment, the points are correctly classified and no more corrections are performed. This concludes the lesson.